Hi there, this is Unmesh from Piximperfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a great day and making it an incredible one. Today, I'm going to share with you an incredible way to always get good skin tones in Photoshop. It's actually a cheat code. No matter what shade of skin tone it is, it's going to work with everything. It's super easy to use. The design is very human. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop, and if you wish to go ahead and download any of these photos and follow along, you know what to do. Check the links in the description. So with the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J to make a duplicate. And this is our first step. Let's name this layer averaging. This is where we figure out which areas of the skin to sample from and match. But what do we match it to? That's where references come into existence. The secret to creating a good skin tone is having a good reference. Now, I always recommend that you create references of skin tones of your own. You can create samples of your own and you can create it by looking at the works that you like, the artists that you follow, so on and so forth. But to get you started, I've created this sample of standard skin tones that you can use as well. By the way, this is the sRGB version. If you're working on an sRGB document, use this. Let's keep it to the side, just like it. So to look at the profile that you're working with, if you cannot already see it, click on the arrow right here and choose document profile. And right now I can tell that I'm working with sRGB. If it shows Adobe RGB right here, bring in the Adobe RGB one. If it shows Pro Photo RGB right here, bring in that one. I'm not sure if I created that, but you can create yours yourself. Now, as we discussed, we need to figure out which areas of the skin to sample from. For it, let's get to the averaging layer. Which area do you think represents the midtones of the skin properly? I think this area would be apt. So let's select the lasso tool right here and make a selection possibly of that area. Now we need to find the average color of that entire area. For it, let's go to filter, blur, average. That's all. Press Ctrl or Command D. Now our goal is to match this color with one of these. How do we make that choice? We need to choose which one is the closest according to brightness levels. One easy way to do it is simply create a solid color adjustment layer at the top and choose gray, black, white, anything with zero saturation and change its blend mode to color. This is by the way a luminosity check layer. If you want to learn more about check layers, you can watch this video later. Now you can select this layer and move it around. By the way, I'm holding the control or command to temporarily get to the move tool and see which one matches the most. I think this one matches the best. So let's match it to these values. Let's keep it at the side so that we remember it. Hit enter or return. Now you can turn off the check layer and just above averaging, you guessed it right, you're going to create a curves adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. You want to make sure that the symbol of the adjustment layer is selected so that sampling happens right. And with the help of the hand right here, we need to plot the red, green and blue or in other words, the RGB values of this color on the graph. How do we do that? Hold the shift key and the command key and simply click on it. Once you sample it, have a look at the reds. See that one is plotted right here. Have a look at the green. Again, it is plotted properly and similarly with the blues. Let's start with the reds. Now we need to simply set this value to this value right here. This is simply the RGB value of this color. That's all. So the input is 177. Let's set it to 190 as it's 190 right here. Similarly with the greens, set the output to 142. All right. Similarly with the blues and sometimes accidentally you can click outside or click somewhere else and things can go bizarre and you might accidentally select something else and start typing right here and it can look weird. So you need to make sure that this one is selected. If it's unselected by mistake, select it again. And now set the value to 119 right here and have a look at the before and after. So here's the before. Oh my gosh, here is the after. Look at all the greens right there, color cast. All of that is gone. Here's the before, here is the after. Pretty darn amazing. But I don't like the shadows a lot. Or maybe we can work a little more in the highlights as well. By the way, if at this point it works for your image, stop right here. But only if you need to work on the highlights and shadows, you can move forward. Most of the times we don't. So let's get back to averaging. And for the shadow areas, let's use this area. Let's go to filter, blur, average. And by the way, since average was the last filter we applied, you can also use the shortcut, which is command control F. It applies the last applied filter. And for the highlights, this area doesn't look right. So I'm going to sample that. Command control F. Control or command D to deselect. Now we can work with these two samples inside of the same curves. Let's get to curves with the help of the hand again. Hold shift and command and click on this one. It should be plotted right. Let's get to reds. Yes, it is plotted right. Now let's see which one it matches with the best. Let's turn on the color check layer and we're going to move it around and see which one works and matches the best. I think this one matches great. 
What about this one? This would be too bright. This one is okay. Let's keep it at the side. Hit enter or return. Let's turn this one off. Let's go back to the curves and let's go to the red channel. Let's select this and set the value to 218. Let's go to greens and set the value to 171 right here. All right. Let's go to blues and set the value to 145. All right. Oh my gosh. This looks amazing. Let's turn it off for a moment and have a look at the before and after. So here's the before and here is the after. It's crazy, crazy good. Now let's do the shadows and see what happens. Similarly for the shadows, I'm moving it around to see which one matches the most. This one or that one. This one is the best. So let's keep it at the side like this. Turn this off, go back to curves and repeat the same process. With the hand selected, hold the shift key and the command key and let's click on this one. We're going to plot this one. Let's go back to reds and the value here should be 98. Let's set it to 98. Green should be 72. And blues should be 60. Now, as you're adjusting skin tones with this method, you want to make sure there's not a drastic difference. If that happens, know that you're doing something wrong and pick a different area for averaging. Let's turn off all of these layers and take a look at the before and after. So here's the before and here is the after. This, my friend, is a night and day difference. Before, after. And of course, you don't need the averaging layer now, so you can simply turn it off or delete it, up to you. Now, if you feel this is changing the contrast and the brightness too much, you can also try changing the blend mode from normal to color. That way, it only changes the color. So, here's the before, here's the after. I actually like it all throughout the image. You can also choose to keep it just on the skin. By selecting the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, take the brush, take a soft round brush with white as the foreground color, simply paint over the skin areas. There we go. Just like that. This is a massive difference. Now keep in mind, you don't have to do all of this all the time. You don't always need to sample all the highlights, midtones, and shadows. Just one sample might be enough. So here's a photo of me in the same setup. I've not done a lot of editing, just a bit of blemish removal. Here's the before, here's the after. And after that, some beard correction, as you can see here. We need to correct that and make it even and that's what I did. Now there's a reason I'm showing you this. When you have a lot of layers stacked, we cannot just simply make a copy and create an averaging layer for it. First of all, let's turn it off and select the topmost layer of all the layers that we are working with and then press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E. It creates a merged layer at the top of everything you see in the canvas right now. Now let's average this color, go to filter and again, why are we doing this? Use the shortcut, Command, Ctrl, F. Press Ctrl or Command D, see which one we would match it with. You don't always have to create that checklist. You can sometimes guess it. So in here I feel, oh my gosh, this one matches a lot. So we're going to use that, keep it at the side and we're going to create, as you guessed it very, very right, a Curves Adjustment layer. Let's select the symbol of the Adjustment layer with the hand right here. Hold the Shift and Command and sample this or in other words, plot this. Now let's go to Reds and we're going to keep it at 190. So let's type in 190. Green, 142. It's already 142. How cool is that? Blue, 119. And just with that, let's turn it off and turn off the averaging, by the way. And just with that, have a look. Here's the before. Here's the after. It's so much more better. And also, I would change the blend mode from normal to color. It takes all the greenish yellow away. Here's the before. And here is the after. And again, if you think it is too much, I would go ahead and decrease the opacity to about 70% on this one. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Take the brush with white as the foreground color. Just paint on the skin. Because there's colored lighting right here, we don't want to mess with that. And we are pretty much done. Now do keep in mind, these are standard skin tones. Don't be afraid to make adjustments to it further along. Now I feel that artistically, the shadows should have more reds. So we can always go back to it. Go back to reds and just reds. And maybe in this area, again, with the help of the hand right here, you can simply click and drag it up to increase the reds in that area. And just a little bit is fine for me. Now, sometimes things can seem like it is going horribly wrong. Let me share with you one more example. So in this example as well, as you can see, we have done the averaging. We have averaged the midtones, the shadow areas, and the highlights as well, right here. But after I did that, it seems to take the color away. So here's the before. It's so vibrant and looking nice. And here's the after. It is standard, but 
it has lost the colors. For moments like this, we need to understand that there are other issues right here that we need to fix too. Keep in mind with this method, we are not fixing the skin unevenness. If the skin color right here is very, very different from the skin color right here, then this method will only get you closer instead of fixing the whole thing. We need to work it out using our own logic and looking at the things we can fix. So to create a better base, let's decrease the opacity of this curve. So let's set it to about 60% so much better. On top of that, we need to even out the skin tones. These areas are less saturated. These areas are something else. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose gradient map. Now let's simply turn it off, single click on the gradient and let's take a sample from the bright areas for the right side. So for the right slider, let's sample possibly this color and it's not sampling right now. You know why? Let's hit cancel for now. The mask is selected. That is why I always recommend select the symbol of the adjustment layer. Let's go back. For the right slider, single click on the color right here and sample this color. For the left one, let's click and sample any dark color that you like. In here, I feel that this is a good sample. Hit OK. And this is OK for now. Hit OK. Let's close it. And now let's turn it on. Of course, it's not going to be perfect. So select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I to invert it and simply take the brush. Select the hard round brush right here and paint an area with white just like this. Now, of course, it is not matching. Our goal right here is to work with the gradient map so that this one perfectly matches with the surroundings so that when we paint, we paint in a perfect blend. So let's double click to go back to the settings right here, single click right here, and just move this around to match it. So I'm going to move it just a little bit. And there you go. Just by doing that, it matches a lot. You can also introduce more sliders and different colors. So I'm just going to click here to introduce a slider and set the color maybe to a dark brown color. Hit OK. Similarly, let's create one more right here and set the color to be something like this. Super bright. Hit OK. And then move these around. Maybe I might want to change this color. Let's click on it and set this color to something like this. And you can also choose your own color. That's up to you. This seems to be appropriate. Hit OK. And for this one as well, I'm just going to modify this just a little bit. That seems about right. And it's very much matching. Once you're satisfied, simply hit OK. Now you can select the mask, take the brush, white as the foreground color, and make sure it's a soft round brush and paint all over the skin. See how the color is coming back to the hand as well. You can, of course, reduce it later because that amount can be unnatural sometimes. But have a look at how it's just adding so much better color. Now, again, we don't want to change the brightness levels or something. So change the blend mode to color. And there you have a look. So here's the before. See, it's uneven all throughout here. It's something else. On the hand, this area is pale and green, right? After we turn it on, after, look at the difference. Now, of course, this would be too much. So let's decrease the opacity of this one as well. So let's keep this one too at 60. Now to take care of the too much highlights on the skin, we can create one more curves adjustment layer. Simply take it down just like this. Now, of course, we don't want it on the dark areas. So double click on the right hand side of the layer and take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right, just like this. Now this is very harsh. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on it to break it apart and take it all apart. And adjust this. I feel this is okay. Hit okay and you can adjust it to your liking. Now on top of this, you can do your retouching. By the way, if you're a professional, I highly recommend Retouch For Me plugins for quick retouch without spending a lot of time. So all you need to do is to press Control, Alt, Shift and E, Command, Option, Shift and E to create a merged layer at the top. Let's go to Filter, Retouch For Me, Retouch For Me, Heal. You can download this and try it absolutely for free. I'll leave a link in the description and the instructions as well. It automatically detects the blemishes just like this and removes them. Hit apply. By the way, you want to make sure make mask is checked. Hit apply and all of them are gone. On top of that, you can press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E again. And again, go to filter, retouch for me, retouch for me, maybe dodge and burn. And by the way, you can batch process all of this from blemish removal to dodging and burning to cleaning up the fabric as well to cleaning the backdrop, retouching the eyes, everything. And we have talked about it in this video right here. This is no dodging and burning. And this is a lot of dodging and burning. I'm going to keep it at about 122. We want the soft light layer. Hit apply. So there you have it. Completely adjustable. You can change the blend mode to soft light. And here's the before. 
Here's the after. It even works all over the body. So here's the before on the arm as well. Here's the after. Now let's take a look at the overall before and after. So here is the overall before and here is the after. And that is how to always get the best skin tones. The secret is having a good reference. You can create a reference of your own. I created this and you can download it and use it as a starting point. The first step is simply finding which areas you want to sample from. For example, I want to sample the mid-tones on the cheek. So select that area average that color and try to find a close match with one of your samples. Once you do, simply match those values using curves. For some images, just sampling the midtones would be fine. For some other images, you might also have to do the highlights and shadows. And for some other images, you might also have to do some additional steps with the gradient maps and even out the skin tones and maybe some retouching as well. That is, there is no limit to it. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. We're up here on cloud nine.